Now, Cassandra itself famously doesn't support joins, and one of the great things about bringing Spark into the picture is that now we have a join transformation, and we can take two RDDs we've created from separate Cassandra queries, join them together just like we're used to. So in this example, we can see that being done suboptimally. And just like all of our suboptimal examples, it really seems pretty sensible. We get an RDD of actors with a trivial query from the actors table, converted into a pair RDD. Same thing with movies, converted into a pair RDD by actor. And then we join those together, take a sample and print it out. Nothing could be easier but we can do better. The Spark Cassandra connector gives us a method called join with Cassandra table. Let's take a look. If you're joining on columns to the second table, which are in the primary key of that second table, you want to use this method. If you need to override the default join condition, you can use the on method. Now on still has to pick columns that are in the primary key. For this to work as an optimization and to be done by the Spark Cassandra connector, it still has to be something that can be converted into CQL. So that has to be a valid CQL query. Before we get back to our original suboptimal query and fixing that up, let's take a look at an example of how these methods work in some code. We're gonna begin with a parallelized collection of actor year, just to kind of make life easy for ourselves. We'll make some simulated keys with Johnny Depp in 2014 and Bruce Willis in 2014. That's an actor in a particular year. And with that RDD in hand, we will join it with the Cassandra table, movies by actor. And so that join gets done in the Spark Cassandra connector, not by Spark. Again, the idea there is that we have work done in the Cassandra process that doesn't need to serialize data, pull it out and push it into the Spark process and have Spark do work. We'd rather do that work locally to Cassandra if we can. The second query does the same thing, but it makes a little bit of a change to the join condition by calling the on method. Now, by default, the first query, which uses join with Cassandra table, is gonna join only on the partition key which if you look at the schema here is just the actor column. You see in the results for that first query, we're getting all Johnny Depp movies irrespective of the year. So we get one that's released in 2010. If we want to modify the join condition, we use the on method and we're gonna add release here to the join condition. That's one of the clustering columns. So we're allowed to do it and still use this optimization. In that case, if you look at the results of the second query, we see only the 2014 movies. It would have been impossible for a 2010 movie to be returned by that query. Now, how does this work inside the Spark Cassandra connector? Well, it implements the classical index-based join algorithm, which we can see played out in this diagram. So the source RDD that we're starting with is over on the left, and that includes, uh, just for this example, Johnny Depp and Bruce Willis. What the connector is gonna do is iterate through the items in that RDD, and for each one of them that participates in the join condition, it will create a new CQL query on the table being joined to. And you can see that there's one, a select star from movies by actor where actor equals Bruce Willis, and another one where actor equals Johnny Depp, and we'll get some arbitrary number of columns back depending upon how productive those actors have been, and those results will be merged into the result of the join. And now we can get back to the original inefficient query that we had. We were just innocently trying to join two Cassandra tables together. Let's look at our optimized code. We do a query on actors, and that's an unconstrained query. We're getting all of the actors back from uh, that table in the Cassandra schema, and we're joining that with the movies by actor Cassandra table. You have to look at the schema over on the right and note that the default join condition, which is gonna to be to match partition keys, is going to work because both of those share a partition key. They're both using actor as the only column in their partition key. So that works out trivially for us. Uh, we then take a sample and print those results out and you see we get a nice optimized join happening partially in Spark, partially inside the Cassandra connector and running faster. This brings up a final question. Is it faster to join movies by actor to actors or actors to movies by actor. Now a join is commutative, so we're gonna get the same results either way, but they won't necessarily perform the same way. Let's take a look at these two examples and see if we can figure out which one's faster. Uh, we see the top one where we query actors first and then join movies by actor to it. The second one, we query movies by actor first and join actors to it. What you have to know is 
which table has the higher cardinality. And I'm just going to guess, we could certainly inspect the data and find out for ourselves, but I'm gonna make an educated guess and say there are more movies than there are actors, since most movies contain more than one actor and actors participate in movies multiple times. So that first one is gonna be faster. We want to do a smaller number of queries. And since this is an index based join, we'll take all the items in that first table and execute a new query for each one of them. So if you know for sure that one of your tables has lower cardinality, you wanna start with that one. It'll always be faster.